there was an elderly couple who were having dinner at another couple's house, and after eating, the wives left the table and they went into the kitchen. The two gentlemen were talking, and one said, hey, I meant to ask you last month you went to that memory clinic. How did it go? The other gentleman said, oh, it was fantastic. I have learned how to recall things that I haven't thought of in 30 years. They teach you games and recall techniques. You, you learn to store information in your brain in a more efficient manner. They even work on short-term memory issues. I'm telling you it was well worth every penny that I spent. To which the other man said, wow, I think I'll give it a try. What's the name of this place? And the man said, the name. What is the name of that place? <laughs> What's the name of that memory clinic that I went to that helped me? He says, I know I'll use one of those recall techniques that they taught me at the clinic. So he thought for a moment, he stared. And then he looked at his friend and he said, What's that flower? It's got thorns, it's usually red in color. People, people give it to each other at Valentine's Day. And the man said, you mean a rose? And the man said, that's it, a rose. And then he yelled at his wife, hey, rose! <laughs> Tonight's message is simple. Christmas is important to our lives and to our faith because when we celebrate Christmas, we remember Christ. And when we remember Christ, we keep him alive, and we keep him in our hearts all year long. So let's look at that. At Christmas time, we create. We create memories and traditions and values and lasting moments that we pass on from generation to generation. Now, one particular memory I have of Christmas growing up was Christmas dinner, which was always turkey with all the fixings. Which made sense because coming from Scotland, we didn't do Thanksgiving. So it made sense that we would have the big Christmas turkey at Christmas time. My mother would cover every inch of that turkey in bacon. And she would put it in the oven at 250 degrees at midnight. And she would cook it for 14 hours. We woke up every Christmas morning with the smell of bacon wafting through the house. And you didn't know whether to run to the tree and check out the presents or run to the oven and check out the turkey. When Marcy and I got married, I couldn't wait to share this tradition with her. And so each Christmas day in my house, there is no turkey to be found. Because <laughs> Marcy and I both remember our family traditions and they are part of who we are. And in our own family, we have created our own memories and our own traditions and our own ways of remembering Christmas morning. And we do that so that our children will remember what we did as a family at Christmas time. And when my children grow up and create their own families, they too will remember what they did at Christmas time. And they too will create new memories for their families. We do this because Christmas is a time to remember. We remember the presents, the decorations, the special meals, the Christmas cookies, the eggnog, the tree, Santa. We remember time spent with family, the joy of children in the house, and the traditions that each family creates. But Christmas is also, and most especially, a time to remember the birth of Christ the love of God, a Savior born to us this day, peace on earth and love in abundance. Christmas is all of these things, but first and foremost, it is a time to remember God's love and all that God does for us each day. Now, why is this important? Because when we remember that Jesus is the real meaning of Christmas, we keep him active, alive, he remains in our hearts, and he's part of our lives all year long. And doing that is crucial to our faith. Tonight I want to tell you a personal story. On December 1st, 2017, I celebrated my one year anniversary as your pastor. 
Now in that time you may have noticed that I like to tell stories. I hope you've noticed that I like to tell stories in my sermon because it's what I do, especially at this time I come out and I tell a story. So this story today is a personal story. It actually happened to my father when he was young and started out in ministry. Now when I do children's stories or sermons, if I tell a story and I use the example of a child in the story, the child's name is always Bobby. I never call the child Sally or Billy or anything else, it's always Bobby. And that's because of a personal story that happened to my dad that I inherited and has happened to me and so on and so forth. My dad was ordained in the summer of 1968, a few months before I was born. And in that first year of ministry, he was doing and learning and, and, and creating and trying to make as little mistakes as possible because he was new to how to serve God in a church. <coughs> Excuse me. And one day he got a call from a family saying that their son had been injured and could he come to the hospital. So he did, he went to the hospital, and he discovered that this couple, son Bobby, had been out behind their house, this was in Scotland, behind the house there was a wooded area, and in the wooded area there was a creek. And Bobby went down to play at the creek. And at the creek, some of the older boys had taken a rope and they had tied it to a tree on one end of the creek, and they would swing across the creek back and forth. And Bobby was never allowed to do this because he was too young. But today, the older boys weren't there, and he wanted to try this. So he got on the rope, and he swung across to the other side, and he jumped down, and it was the most fabulous thing he'd ever done. So he did it again, and again, and again, just like Tarzan, swinging across the creek and over to the other side, and he was having a wonderful time, and everything was perfect until the last time. He swung up the rope, he fell into the creek. Ordinarily, this wouldn't be a problem. But the creek bread was, of course, dry and low that year. And when he fell, he hit his head on a rock and was rushed to the hospital. This is where my father would enter into the story. And for the next three days, he sat with his family and gave them pastoral care as best he could. And they were in the hospital for three days. And unfortunately, the injuries were too severe and the little boy died. And my dad went with the family, and then two days later, it was a Sunday, and he did what he always did. He came to church, and he led the worship service, and he got to the time where he asked the children to come forward, and he stood just like I'm doing now, and he said, with the boys and girls come forward, and they came forward, and they sat at his feet, and he said, boys and girls, today I want to tell you a story about a boy named Bob. And as soon as he said it, in his mind, he knew he had made a horrible mistake. And he looked up, and there in the third row were the parents. And in his mind, he's going crazy. He's saying to himself, what did you just do? They're coming here for answers. And you're reminding them of what happened to their son two days ago. You could have picked any name out of the 50,000 names in the world, and you picked that one. And he felt horrible. And he went on with the service as best he could. And as soon as it was over, he sought out this couple. And he said, I am so sorry, I, I have no excuse, we were just together all week, and when I sat down with the children, it's simply the name that came out of my mouth. And I am very sorry to have done that to you and to your family. And they said to my dad, could you do me a favor, or could you do us a favor? When you tell stories in church and ministry, could it always be I'm, I'm seeing some of you messed up. Could it always be Bobby? Because if you use our son's name, then he gets that live to that life. He gets to live for God. He gets to teach people. He gets to bring people to Jesus, just like we wanted him to do for his whole life. And my father agreed. And then he went one better. When my brother, my old brother, announced he was going into ministry, when I announced I felt called into ministry, my dad told us that story and asked us, to do the same. And we've been doing that. Bobby's story has been told in five states, has been told a combined 80 years in ministry. We've been telling the story, the three of us, and using him as an example to teach for 50 years and two generations. Tonight's story is not a sad story. 
It is a wonderful story because it tells us about God's love. It tells us about living for Christ. It tells us how we are able to be taught, to teach, and to be used in this world. And it tells us the true meaning of Christmas. Christmas is more than the presents and the traditions and the celebrations. Christmas is remembering. Christmas is keeping Christ alive by our stories, by our actions, by the way that we live. Christmas is about remembering. I wish you all a very happy and blessed Christmas. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us this day. Help us as we celebrate the birth of your son, as we have a wonderful day tomorrow of presents and family and celebration, help us to keep Christmas alive by telling Jesus' story, now and always.